Welcome to Team Encore. We've got an amazing guest here today, Major Ed Polito. He's U.S. Army retired. Um, he's the senior VP of Folds of Honor Foundation. He's the founding member of Warriors for Freedom Foundation, founder of Warrior Nation, published author of an autobiography titled Warrior for Freedom, Challenge, Triumph, and Change, the Major Ed Polito story. And more recently, he's the founder of Heart Lion Foundation with professional golfer John Daly. General David Petraeus awarded Major Ed the Bronze Star with Valor, Purple Heart, Meritorious Service Medal, and Joint Service Commendation and Achievement Medals. Major Ed's story of courage and sacrifice has been featured in Time Magazine, PGA Magazine, Fox News, CNN. Welcome to the show, Major Ed. How you doing? Wow, that's a mouthful. I'm doing great. What a great day, <laughs> American. And and I had to I had to leave out three quarters of it. So um, <laughs> thank you. Um, Thank you for blessing us with your with your time today, and um, tell our listeners where where you're calling in from. Well, I'm actually in uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, I tell you what, we we sell the Encore uh, balls over at Rose Creek Country Club. My good friend <laughs> Scott Berger, big yep. shout out to him. He does a great job and great ambassador for the cause as well. And to all of the folks there at Encore, I want to just say thank you for all you do and love using the, the, the ball. And I've hit some great shots. And I tell you what, you know what, that green ball goes in. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we appreciate your support, Major Ed. And, and certainly, um, you know, Scott Berger um, there, there in Oklahoma has been amazing for the company and for us. Um, so thank you for, for that. But uh, for our listeners, how can can you let us know how you came into the game of golf and how that became such a, a big part of, of your story? Yeah, well, I'll start out by just letting everybody know I was a baseball player. So to me, um, you know, hand and eye, and eye coordination always came uh, to me. Um, I loved playing the game. And after a tragic, it, um, you know, amputation, you know, what do you do? I used to play competitive softball and you know what, I had to give it up. And you could still do those kind of things, but at the competitive level that I was at, you know, it kind of feels like, you know what, let me find a new sport to get involved with. And it was interesting because um, I began to get into the work of Folds of Honor. And before, I, you know, I played in golf tournaments and I actually, you know, interacted with people as, re as it related to golf. But it wasn't until I really came to be here at the Folds of Honor about 13, 14 years ago where I decided – um, that, you know, therapeutic process with the game could be incredible. And right after I'd gotten out of the military, um, I had gone to a golf clinic and uh, Ping was there. And some of the Ping uh, representatives, um, you know, helped us get um, co coordinated and, and connected not only to the game, but also how to really utilize it adaptively. And that's kind of how it all got started. And then, of course, I went to Ireland twice and after going to Ireland the first time, and in a way, I had the greatest time. But one thing was clear. I'm a very competitive person. And so when I came back, I was like, you know what? I've got to improve my game. So I went to Gallardia Country Club here in Oklahoma City um, and uh, began to kind of take some lessons. And now I'm hitting the ball straight, and I feel good about it. And I just think that the game for me is, is a therapeutic process. And I was just at Pinehurst. Uh, for the last two, three days. And I got to tell you, you know what, when you play those challenging courses, it's great to be able to hit it down the fairway, be able to putt very well. And those greens were awesome, man. Let me tell you something. I mean, that ball was, was rolling. But the great thing is, I, you know what, I used an encore golf ball and had a great round. And you know what, I just um, really, really understand the game a lot more. And what I tell people about it is like when you have a disability, and see, I'm a left uh, leg amputee above the knee. And so it's very hard to come across. But, um, you know, we've done some adaptive stuff to my leg. And now, you know what, I'm playing the game. And when you're able to compete at some level, and it's not a competition when you're playing with friends, et cetera, but it is, you want to play the game correctly. And you want to play it, you know, to where you're not shanking the ball everywhere. And, and it just doesn't feel good. Um, that now I can play the game and with a couple of uh, 
of lessons from John Daly, man. I'm making a difference. <laughs> yeah, can you can you maybe let our listeners know about the Heart of Lion Foundation? And you know, I know at, at a high level you're you're very involved in getting other veterans into the game of golf, um, and, and maybe just speak to um, the you know the game and and how it's helped um, veterans. I know I've I've been a part of the PGA Hope program here in Western New York, um, in Buffalo, and and that's serving, um, teaching veterans the game of golf. And I, I've seen firsthand um, just the, the joy that the game brings to people um, learning it and getting out on the course, hitting that shot that keeps you coming back. So if, can you please um, let us know about the, the John Daly Carter Lion Foundation? And, and um, I'm, I'm sure everyone would be curious to hear about that. Well, it's a great story, actually, um, around July time frame. And I wasn't looking to do anything differently. But COVID's kind of changed me a little bit, too. I have a 19 and 14-year-old getting ready to turn 15. And the thing that um, really changed me during this COVID was the fact that um, a friend of mine, and actually even my father, told me, hey, what are you, what's, gonna, what's your legacy look like? And, you know, I've worked at Bowls of Honor now 13 years uh, Colonel Rooney, uh, of course, is our founder. I'm sort of the co-founder of the organization. And I went to Dan in July and I said, Dan, I had a great conversation with John Daly and he asked me to help him uh, with his philanthropy efforts. And I feel like there's a calling there. Not only was he working with St. Jude's, but the Boys and Girls Club, but, you know, he wanted to do something for veterans and mental health. And I just felt like, um, wow, you know, you want to do something for mental health. And then what he also said is that, I want to do something for mental health, but I want to utilize the game as a way of therapeutic process. And those are the words that kind of hit my heart. And then the other thing really that happened is that during that same time frame, my dad uh, was diagnosed with a reoccurring cancer. And of course, John was diagnosed with cancer. And it was almost like right around those same weeks. And you know what? I'm struggling a little bit. John is a great friend. And my father is my hero. And you know, when John called me and says, have you made a decision? What do you think? Um, and then my friend Chick Linsky, who used to be with Budweiser, um, called and said, hey, do you want to do this? I said, hey, listen, we don't have any money, but I guarantee you we can make a difference. And with the horsepower that we have with John and, and me and then also Chick, and then now we've got people just coming to us and saying, hey, we want to be a part of this. Um, you know what? We, we took the leap of faith during COVID. And you don't do that in a philanthropy space. I mean, because, again, we'd have no resources, nothing to start with. I have a great job at the Folds of Honor, and I still do some work with them. But, you know, I took a salary cut, and I just decided to take a leap of faith. I'm only saying that to all of you that's out there listening, um, and that will listen to this podcast. You know what? Follow your heart. Follow your soul. Your company, um, what I love about it, is the fact that it took a leap of faith out there. Um, that, you know, to go into the golf ball space and to do what you've done in just a short period of time, I'm sold on it. I'm sold on it because I love the logo and it shines real bright <laughs> with the fact that the John Daly Heart of a Lion, uh, John Daly Major Ed Heart of a Lion Foundation logo is going to be there. Scott Berger's actually getting ready to do some golf balls for us. So to all of the sales force out there and all the listeners, hey, listen, let's, let's get on this. Let's, Let's empower and, and utilize the, the heart of a line as a, as a charity of choice. I know you've got some other ones that you work with, but I think this could be a very powerful relationship. And I'm only saying that too, because I feel like um, I, I, don't, I only sell products that I believe in. And I'm not the guy that you're going to go ahead and, and give them some, you know, uh, here, sell this orange juice or sell this. And, and the orange juice just doesn't taste well. Um, I've got to own it. I've got to have passion. I've got to understand the commitment behind it and the people behind it. It's all relationship based in what we do. And so that's how the, the John Daly Major Ed Heart of a Lion Foundation came to be. And then now we've got a golf program where John's going to give lessons to some of our veterans. And, um, and then we also just, just got news that we're going to be at the PNC uh, championship. Uh, Tiger Woods is playing in it uh, this year now. And um, it's the father and son kind of thing. And now I think they've changed the name on it because I think um, they've got a little bit of a different format. But John Daly and Little John are going to play. And guess what? We're going to be down there and I'm going to be promoting uh, Encore Golf Balls because i got to tell you, you know what? That's what it's all about. 
That's awesome. I know, I know um, Gary Player, um, one, of, one of our, you know, phenomenal ambassadors and, and um, you know, his sons and nephews have, have played in that event. Is that, is that the Branson, Branson, Missouri one? No, this one's in Orlando. And oh, okay. uh, uh, it'll be on the 17th through the 20th on the Golf Channel. Okay. And, uh, and it's got, and then they've got, you know, I, I heard, man, I heard they've got a stellar crew. You have to look it up. But the good thing about it is that little John is playing, of course, with his dad, John. And um, I think that's just a great fitting thing. You know, he just signed with the University of Arkansas. And I've got some deep roots at the University of Arkansas with friends that have gone there, living in Oklahoma. And gr I didn't grow up here, but I ended up here. And uh, my wife, of course, has big roots here. And she's got friends that went to Arkansas. So we wish him well. And I think, you know what, he's going to be a great player. And you know, he doesn't say much, um, you know, he's got a, uh, he's got somewhat of a disability, but he's a good kid. He's practicing and he's playing and he's winning. And I think to me, you know what, that is a great example of overachieving and conquering any challenges that you may have in life. And I've done that myself and I understand what it's all about. Ken, can you share for our listeners any, any memorable moments that stand out uh, from your, your time in the army? Well, I have to say, you know, what stands out for me, and there's a lot of great things that happen. Number one, I led um, the enlisted and non-commissioned officer, the backbone of our military. Our, our military is, ex is exceptional because of the fact that those individuals aren't the ones that are highly paid, but they do it because they took that oath of office to defend this great nation. That's the first thing I would say. The other thing that I say is that, you know what, I live by the principles of my faith in God, and my love for my family, and certainly the love for country. And that, to me is really where my story begins. That's, the, that's actually the foresight that I look at, the motivation, the inspiration, the perseverance. I use a word called resiliency. That word is very powerful. It's never quit. You know what, when you're, on, when you're doing a sale to the sales reps out there and someone tells you no, you know what, there's 10 other people that you can ask and see what you have. Because when you have a superior product, you can make it happen. And to me, the superior product on our end in the military is our personnel. And my my one of my most incredible moments and i have to say it was the best thing that ever happened to me was hitting that roadside bomb and i know that sounds morbid but it really changed my life it changed my life into a different tra trajectory look where i'm at right now this morning talking to you um being a part of the golf community i'm um, understanding that you know what we leave no one behind on the field of battle and then you know one of the biggest things that i've done is is help colonel rooney with the folds of honor and then now helping John Daly with the heart of a lion. And that's what I'm all about. And that's what, when I go to bed at night, those are the accomplishments. Not the fact that I have all these awards and everything that's happened to me in that regard, but the accomplishments of helping someone else. And that to me is the power of, of giving and it's the power of who we are as a people. How, how difficult was it for you to, to bounce back um, from that, that injury and, um, you know, that you talk about resiliency, you talk about mental toughness. Um, you know, can you, can you share some things you've learned on your journey uh, with our listeners that, that can help them in their lives? Yeah, I wrote a book um, called Warrior for Freedom. You mentioned it earlier. In that book, it really profiles kind of who I am as, as an individual. And there are words in that book that I talk about um, resiliency living by the honor and the code. Um, and, you know, it's our own code, our internal code of who we are as a people. Um, there's a word perseverance that I use that, you know what, you're always in the fight. You know, you've got to persevere. You know, loyalty, it's always up and down and across the organization. That's a word that I use a lot too because it goes along with honor, duty, and responsibility. In any company, I talk to corporate people all the time, Honor, duty, and responsibility are words that really we don't talk a lot about. The other word that we don't talk a lot about either, and you'd be surprised. Well, I don't think you would be, but a lot of people, I'm surprised when I go around the country and I ask employees what their mission statement is. I think having a mission statement and, tr and holding true to those values um, and those guiding principles that really make you who you are, not only as a company, but as an individual, I think those are the things that resonate with me. And when I wrote this book called Warrior for Freedom, people can go to actually to get a copy of it at majored.org. 
majored.org. The reason that that was important was that I was told I wasn't going to be able to speak, write, or comprehend very well, and that my memory was going to have problems. And then, of course, I work with the NFL now. Uh, Jim McMahon's a good friend of mine. We've been working on brain development and brain studies and how to reconnect the brain. That that what I found through that whole healing process and recovery was that you could utilize the game of golf to help you with the concentration, the comprehension, um, technique, um, and all of those things. And I will tell you, it is the only game out there that I have seen that really makes an impact. And that's why PGA Reach and PGA Hope and, um, are really doing a lot of great work to get these veterans out to play because it is helping with their mental health and with their traumatic brain injuries. And I think to me, that's the signature wound of the war. So if anybody was to ask you, what is the signature wound of the war? It's not PTSD. It's, it's masked in the traumatic brain injury. And the reason that that's important is because people hit their heads on the concrete, on the ground, get a mild concussion from it. And if you've noticed any correlation with the NFL football players, you'll see that that correlation is from the hits that they've incurred. And when they don't stimulate the brain, you end up like a junior Seau. And you know, that was a tragic thing, but I think what we can do is learn from his story so that it can impact our story. And that's why the game of golf is important. That's why Jim McMahon plays a lot of golf these days, because guess what? It's good for his recovery. What, what advice would, would you give um, listeners who, who might not be, um, you know, they, they may not have served, they might not be a veteran, but maybe they know someone who, um, has had a traumatic brain injury or um, is suffering from PTSD, but they, they want to help, but they don't necessarily know how. Is there, is there some good advice you can give listeners on that? Yep, the, the word that I would use on that is engagement and empowerment. Uh, those two words are very critical words that I use every day. Um, it's a Salesforce uh, word, actually. Those two words are actually Salesforce words, I think, because engagement, number one, is you're engaging the public, you're engaging people. What we find is that in, in our veterans, one of the biggest things that we've seen that has been, that has worked is peer-to-peer -peer support. The reason that that PGA Reach and Hope program is good is because there's golf professionals out there reaching out to the veterans to connect them, not only to their community. It's not just giving them a lesson. That's not what I think that program's all about. It's about giving them some life skills that they may need so that they can transition in the civilian sector. The other thing too, that I would tell all the listeners and everyone out there, bottom line, you don't have to serve in uniform to serve your country. And that to me is what I told some um, youth yesterday, um, seventh graders at that. I told them, I said, listen, you can't just go out here and think that, you know what, the world's gonna give you everything. Um, and that's what I don't like about what's going on in our country right now. It's not negative. I'm, I'm straight up with what I say. Bottom line is everybody thinks that you're supposed to be owed something or given something. That's not how it works. You have to work for it. You have to strive to be successful. You have to have a quality education. You have to understand that, you know what, you have a patriotic duty and responsibility to not be negative in this country. And that to me is, is what I tell people. Do you want to do something powerful? Love your nation. Love its people, be respectful, and understand that, you know what, we have an obligation to be good to each human that we come in contact with. And my hope is that, you know, everybody talks about unity and peace and all these things. Look, this is, that's soapbox talk. Where we really do things is when we actually walk it and we do it. Um, and as a company, what I've loved about what you guys are doing is, you know what, you're the little, you're the little group in the, in the big space. But guess what? You're, you're in the big space because you can play. And that to me is so powerful because guess what? You're gonna be successful. You're gonna grow. You've already been growing a lot. You've already got a lot of people that are involved. And that's a learning lesson to say, you know what? We don't quit and we have aspirations and we have a future and we have goals and objectives to achieve. And you know what? Every step counts up that ladder. And that's what I told those youth the other day. I said, you know what? At the end of the day, when you don't have faith in something or you don't have love for your nation, you won't have or be able to take care of your family appropriately. And that to me is the building block for who we are. Find ourselves, find our guiding principles and understand that, you know what, 
in corporate America today, we have an obligation to each other, but we also have an obligation to provide the best service possible. And that to me is the challenge that I, I give to everyone today and tomorrow is what can we do to be better and be the best that we can be? Great advice. And I'm curious in terms of your personal development, um, whether it be um, you know, in your, your times in the service, um, in the army or in your, your professional um, business endeavors, um, did you have some, some solid mentors that, that really helped you out along the way or, or that you looked up to? And um, can you maybe share um, some insight on that? You know, that's a great question. Uh, and I said this to the youth yesterday as well. One thing that's missing in America right now is great mentorship. That was like the backbone of our country. Uh, now everyone thinks that, hey, you can, you can own, you know, Facebook and go from point A to point B, and that's a trajectory. Um, I'm sorry, that's not the way it works. A lot of it has to be hard work and dedication and, and inspiration and motivation to, to being grounded yourself. And, you know, as I travel around the country, um, you know, there have been some great mentors. General Franks, Tommy Franks. I mean, what a great man. Um, Hobart, Oklahoma is where he lives. And I got to tell you, you know what? He travels across the world and teaches about the importance of, of patriotism and citizenship and how important our country is, you know? And I know during this time of divisiveness, I just have never understood why we don't challenge ourselves to, to understand that living in a nation where we could say that we're the greatest nation in the world and really mean it. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, when you're playing golf and you're playing competitive, I mean, you know what? Yeah, God bless second, third place, but everyone wants to win. But if you don't win, you know what? You take it on the chin and you work harder to get to that point. And um, General Franks and General Petraeus, that's what they taught me. You know what? You may not win every time, but certainly you put out your best effort. And there was this metaphor that, uh, uh, that was used uh, with uh, one of the generals that I used to work with. And he would always say, you know what? Don't ever run last. Don't ever run in last place. And the reason that he said that is because he, he used a metaphor of the racehorse. And he said, you know what? You can always be the one that sprints ahead and dies out at the, at the end of the race or you can be the closer that closes in all of, on all of them and says, you know what, with grace and with dignity, I just won, but guess what? That win right there is just one of many wins you would hope to have, but guess what, everyone's gonna chase you down. And if you don't work hard and you're stagnant and you don't give it your 110%, guess what, you won't finish on that finish line. The other thing too that was said to me is, we all crossed the finish line together. Not necessarily at the same time, but we all crossed the finish line together. And the reason that that was told to me was this important element. And that was that, you know what, in crossing the finish line, we leave no one behind. And there will be people that will be faster than us. But when we all cr cross the finish line, we cross the finish line as a team. And it's mission first, team always. And I think that's a great motto. That's a motto I live with each and every day. And our new motto at the John Daly Major at Heart of a Lion Foundation, ironically, is mission first, people always. And that to me is a, a great attribute of, of having something in your heart. And that is a motto that I learned from the military and from mentors um, that I just mentioned. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I, I don't know that we, we could have, um, you know, ended on, on some better metaphors. Um, this notion of finishing, you know, finishing together community, um, you know, teamwork, um, along with the, the notion that, uh, you know, it's, it's a marathon, not a race. And, and, you know, don't, don't worry so much about, um, you know, tomorrow, the next day and, and, you know, give yourself time to, to grow, to develop, to, to achieve your goals. Um, you know, Really appreciate you coming on, Major Ed. I know we've covered a lot of topics. Um, in closing, is there is there any last piece of advice? And I know you've given us so many great thoughts today. Um, any last um, 
you know, piece of advice or, or things that you want our listeners to know about you? Yeah, I think that the, me the message I would leave you with is, um, it was General Peter Pace, the former Joint Chiefs, and he told me something very powerful. Um, and I think the, the metaphor around that is that, you know what, number one, we never quit uh, on the precious gift of life. And number two, um, we understand that, you know what, it's, it's not always about us. It's about we and togetherness. And I think what we find missing sometimes in this nation is that spirit of, of collective um, effort. And I think, you know, in saying that, what General Peter Pace said, told, told me, he said, you know what, Major, you can always sit there, you know, and basically understand that on that day, you didn't lose that leg. Remember this, on that day, you sacrificed your leg for your country and for everyone in this nation to be free. My comment to that is that we all need to sacrifice something. And every day, it may be sacrificing a little time to, or sacrifice, you know, a dollar for someone that may be needy, or maybe sacrifice some time to give someone some lessons, or maybe sacrifice, and like Scott Berger's done, he handed me a, a sleeve of golf balls one day and he said, you know what, go out there and play. Guess what? I tell people to go and buy those golf balls because of that, you know, and that to me is the inspiration of who we are and what we're all about as people. And so what the other piece of advice that I would give to everyone, setting those politics aside, I'm about done with the negativity around politics. Politics doesn't drive us. We drive us. And this nation will be the best it can be when we stay away from the fray and we say, you know what? Politics will not divide us. It will not change us. It will only motivate us to be better towards one another. And that to me, if anything, is the peace and unity words that I would say. And I'm not trying to use those words today because I tell you what, they're overused because people don't really understand what that really means. And that means that, you know what? We're nice, we're respectful, and we're honorable to each other. And that to me is the message before I close to say, you know what, let's all come together and make a difference and be empowered by that difference. And with that said, go to jdme.org. And if you want to make a donation here, Christmas time's coming. We've got a, a drive for military families. And then we're also doing some other things too, to empower and support our nation's heroes and their families. And for that, I salute everybody. Wow. Powerful closing message, and, and you're, you're getting me choked up here, Major Ed. Uh, we will certainly share those links to um, the various organizations so our, our listeners here can, um, you know, reach out to you, get in touch, um, volunteer, donate, um, and, and help with your various causes. So thank you from all of Team Encore for joining us today. All right. Hoorah! <laughs> Take care. All right, brother. Bye.